What's the one thing all great teams have in common? Great coaching. Don't try to suck up to me, Andrew. Hey, Goldberg! I bet that talk was a team, brother. You stop it. No, I agree. I would not be an acid physically. I have more of a podcast body. Clap, 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 clap. It's the Quack Attack Podcast. Hey, everybody. I will represent Belgium. I'm Mike. That's Tommy. Hi, everyone. That's Kevin. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Quack Attack Podcast, the Definitive Mighty Ducks Podcast. I stumbled over the opening line. Disappointed, but that's okay. I was just nervous because we have with us Evan Moore himself, Brady Noon. Brady, thanks for being here. For sure. Thanks for having me. What's up, guys? How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. So obviously, you know, Brady from Mighty Ducks Game Changers. He's Evan. Also in Good Boys. I would highly recommend it. Uh, you get to hear him swear a lot. You get to hear him sing <laughs> a little bit. Uh, was Boardwalk Empire recently announced the voice uh, in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the animated movie coming December 3rd, Disney Plus. Check it out. Yeah. But we're going to like put you on the hot seat right off the bat. So okay. uh, we had we had a couple episodes. We talked with Tegan. We talked with Bella. Uh, we talked with Sway, Maxwell, DJ, and they told this story on set about you uh, bringing some fart spray and spraying yeah. it in a classroom. And um, yeah, like I said, they they kind of narc you out. So it would not yeah. be- the heck, yeah, Snitching on <laughs> yeah. So um, just what happened from your perspective? All right. So um, pretty much the it was a very slow day. Nothing was happening. It was just very, very technical background work that we were doing. It's a lot of action. Not really like not really a very fun day. Um, so I was like, all right, today seems like the perfect day to make people laugh. Right. So uh, I thought it'd be a great idea, which I think is brilliant. It just it wasn't very it wasn't very nice to do to the people who had to, to clean it up, which I did help clean it up in my defense. But I pretty much, I went out to um, Granville Island in Vancouver, Canada, and there's this joke store. And I ended up buying some of this like liquid, liquid ass or like the fart spray, whatever it is. And um, yeah, so I took that to set and I sprayed it a couple times in the classroom when no one was in there. <laughs> and uh, there's two trailers that divide half of us in. I was in the one that I did not spray. So yeah, so I sprayed that, and then everyone went in there, and everyone thought, everyone was like, eh, oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> and, like, all the parents smelt it. It was so bad, and it was just, like, this big thing, which I didn't mean to cause the troubles that I did for everyone. All the kids were laughing. The teachers were laughing. It was funny, but, like, I don't know, the the uh, the uh, the trailer crew who had to help me clean it up wasn't very happy with me. They were They were yelling at me. But, if, you, if you had to do it ever again, though, would you do it? Probably not. I got yelled at. I, I hate getting yelled at. That's, that's my that's my least favorite thing. Like, like in like in trouble with teachers or like if you've ever been brought down to the principals, like I've never been brought down to principals for something like bad. But every time I'm just in that situation, like in your stomach drops and you're like, it's hard to like swallow and like your throat gets all weird. Like, I hate being in that that situation. Yeah. So, like, how much trouble did you get in? Did like the crew did like Brill talk to you? Like, how how high did this go to where yeah, you? Know? Yeah, it was never. I never got to Steve Brill ever. Um, it got to about the trailer crew, which is not very far. <laughs> it didn't get much <laughs> past us and the trailer crew. It was. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't explode. It wasn't that crazy it wasn't that bad it was a pretty easy fix we, we just sprayed febreze everywhere and it was good oh Let okay. it fair enough yeah. fair enough yeah i mean but, but the thing, sway was my accomplice and she was in on it completely wow uh, I, 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 was, I like it pull him down with you she was yeah I'm down. Going down. <laughs> he's coming out with me like <laughs> she was literally in there with me laughing and spraying it too so wow but but I'm I'm telling you this now. I didn't narc when it came to like <laughs> the trailer crew finding out and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, I kept my mouth full. Yeah, I she, took the blame for that. She conveniently omitted that fact. 
that she was with you when, when yeah we- I'm glad I'm glad like what like I'm the only one that seems a bit yeah messed. anyway let's uh yeah I know touchy topic let's uh let's move on here <laughs> um so Tegan and Bella did say that they they convinced you an extra was wearing like a hot pink scarf um at some point or was trying to convince you did you face any other sort of repercussions because did you face any retaliation from the Spartans? I mean, mentally, mentally with myself, yeah. Like, I was questioning my own, like, beliefs. Like, um, <laughs> it was just, it was very aggravating because the scarf was clearly, like, yellow or an orangey yellow and, like, black. And they're like, it's hot pink and neon green. And I'm like, you're not funny. So I went to the parents after I took a photo of it. And we completely, like, I think Sway's mom was the one that was like, um, now they're pulling a prank on you. They told me to go with it. Like she snitched on Sway and like everyone and like the whole joke was ruined. But I'm so glad that I kept my sanity because if I went home that night and still convinced that they thought it, that it was neon pink and green, I, I probably would have lost it the next morning. <laughs> wow. Wow. A lot of psychological warfare on my next game changers. <laughs> it honestly is. It's it's all a mental game with these kids. It's it's ridiculous. We get no work done. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the uh the writers and directors are glad to hear that so no um, honestly, honestly it is a great time and like they're all such such talented actors i actually speak very highly of them i'm just busting but um yeah i, I don't know i had a really lot of, i had a lot of fun hard work um definitely did get a lot of work done because we finished the whole season <laughs> yeah. but but yeah for sure it was a lot of fun good good jokes yeah of course of course so let, let i like to back up here i like to get the journey uh especially for someone like you who sort of, to me at least from the outside, has it figured out a little bit at a young age. Um, how did you just get sort of involved in the acting and obviously you had Boardwalk Empire and that kind of stuff. How did that all happen for you? Right, well, I I have an I- identical twin brother. Um, his name's Connor. And if anyone knows anything about the industry is twins are a free in pretty, <laughs> pretty much. And that's If you guys have twins, any of you guys have kids and you guys have twins, I highly recommend putting them in acting if they're very sociable because you will go far because <laughs> what they do is on Borak Empire, we, me and Connor played the same role. So legal hours, you're only allowed to work like four and a half hours at that age, which is not a lot at all. Right. And if we're filming a scene, that's like not even enough for a full day, like not even half of a full day. So what they would do, would they put me in for four and a half hours sub me out and put my brother in for another four and a half hours so we get a full nine hour day which is pretty solid it's pretty solid and um that's what they did but the reason that we got into it was i live in new jersey so we're close to atlantic city and my mom and dad were pushing me and my brother in a double stroller and we ended up passing our my now still manager about how long was it 13 years ago something like that i've been acting now and it was 13 years ago and we bumped into our manager and she was like, I love them. They're beautiful kids. I want them to come audition for me. So my mom thought it was like a mall scam. Like, you know, when you're like, you want to be in a movie? Like, yeah. she was like one of those. So we were very skeptical, but my mom just took the chance because like, why not? And it was like legit. And my manager really loved us and started sending us out on auditions after we signed with her. And then the rest has been history. Yeah. But my brother doesn't act anymore. I, I'm dealing with that act now. But. Gotcha. But whenever y'all were younger, did you used to get mad if one got like the better part of the role, the, of the same role that you were playing? Um. Well, when we turned a certain age, we started to look different. So we started going against each other. And um, with no disrespect thrown towards my brother, he never beat me out on a role um, once. So yeah, he pretty much got pretty discouraged from that and just stopped acting overall so yeah i'm pretty sure he was heard about that <laughs> he brings <Yeah>. quit so. <laughs> yeah so like we said boardwalk empire you do good boys how does mighty ducks you know come on your radar what do you mean like when it came across the table to me yeah yeah how did you just figure out was it just your manager saying hey like this is open uh, or- it was actually it, it was just like any audition. I just got an audition handed to me and then that I knew that the directors were interested in me and I knew about Mighty Ducks. I knew about Steve Brill. I knew about all these amazing creators who were on the project already. 
Um, so I knew about all these things and I was like, that sounds incredible. Let's go for it. Let's try and, let's try and book it. But I was shocked that Disney came to me right after, uh, right after Good Boys. I was, I was shocked. Yeah. I mean, like that is not coming up Good Boys. If you've seen that movie, that is not Disney at all. It's not Disney. But, um, I saw that they really liked me. So I went for it and I got flown out to LA a couple times to meet the directors. They loved me. They kept me for table reads, green, green screen, reads, green reads. I forget what it's called. And um, yeah, I got it. So <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, you mentioned uh, it's quite a jump from like Good Boys to Mighty Ducks. Um, yeah. First of all, I'm just curious, like, what did your family think of Good Boys when you're just on screen dropping f bombs and uh, messing around with some adult stuff and that kind of stuff. Well, most of my family is pretty supportive. I would say, I don't know, like 3% of them were like, um, look at me differently a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but they, they all, they all love me a lot, you know, and I'm very grateful for all of them and their support. Cause I, I wouldn't be here without them, honestly, because I couldn't go to Canada alone. I couldn't go to any of these places all alone. I would need them. And you no, know, I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. So you get Mighty Ducks. Were you familiar with the Mighty Ducks at all? Had you seen the movies before you got the part? What was your sort of background? Yes, I was very familiar because in fifth grade, I went through like this stage where everything in my life was Mighty Ducks. So side note, I grew up like in, in, in a household where all my family knew about um, like the 80s like my brother and sister like we grew up all old heads so we knew about like all these old cool uh like references all these throwback songs and stuff like that so all that stuff pretty came uh came pretty um pretty natural to us and we found mighty ducks especially me and i i loved it i played hockey all throughout fifth grade and seventh grade um and i just played roller hockey because i never stepped foot on ice yet until mighty ducks mm-hmm. so I went from rollerblading to on the ice and it was a pretty easy switch, but, um, but yeah, that was my experience with my ducks. I loved it. Obsessed with it. When you, uh, when you auditioned, was it always for the role of Evan and did they pitch it to you as like, this is the Charlie Conway, essentially you're the main kid or what was that process like? Or were you reading for other characters as well? Initially I was reading for Nick. I was reading for Nick. And then when I went in, they were like, this kid is not a nerd at all. Like he just, even at my best acting, I could not be as good as Maxwell, not even remotely close. Maxwell fit that role so perfectly. It was, it was crazy. And um, yeah, so I auditioned for Evan after they sent me back out and they really liked me for Evan. So they just kept me there and they pretty much told me like, this is, look, this is your show. This is about you and your mother and how you get cut from the hockey team. I'm like, okay, okay. So it was a big role. It was definitely my biggest so far and yeah I was, I was ready to take on the challenge I didn't mind getting switched up that much I could adapt pretty quickly to that but hey I'm, I'm happy I got Evan you know <laughs> when when you were going through the your your Mighty Ducks phase like who, who was your who's your favorite um who did you identify with the most uh and what, they, like, what do you remember from the movies Charlie yeah Charlie instantly i mean like he's, like he's like a fan favorite charlie or banks banks was cool i remember banks was really cool and i've always been like not the tallest like i'm 15 i'm five foot five i'm not the tallest but like when i was like in like fifth grade i was probably like four foot four or something really small and i really liked fulton reed and i was like i can crush you like fulton reed like i thought i was massive after seeing that movie <laughs> he wings that movie yeah, so this is a very controversial topic on our podcast, the, the sort of correct order in terms of like best to worst of the original trilogy. How would you rank, you know, D1, D2, D3 from best to worst? There are, there are wrong answers here. <laughs> Three was my favorite. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Oh, what? Yeah. No. Yes, there's a dang it. <laughs> three? Yeah, three's Kevin, the best, man. Kevin, three was your favorite? Absolutely. How how is that even in the question? 
Um, hey, we've discovered I have a lot of support on my side. This is really um, dozens of them. Respectively, yeah. <laughs> respectively speaking, because I don't want to discredit anyone who was in the original Mighty Ducks, the production for three was the worst out of the two by far. I think it goes in order. One's the best, two's the second best, three is the worst. Okay. And they're all good movies, but compared to the other two, three is incomparable. Yes. In in my opinion, I think it goes one, two, three. I agree with you, Brady. I think that is my point too. People are saying, oh, you're like downing three. I'm saying three's, three's good, but it's not. It's up phenomenal, to but compared to the other two, it's it's not like it's. Yeah. Hey, me, just, me, me and my buddy DJ, we'll just be all alone on our <laughs> island, all right? DJ definitely has not seen the third one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I have very like unpopular opinions. Like I I think the prequels to Star Wars are better than the the originals. Like I think I think Hayden, I think uh Hayden Christensen is just the best Anakin. I love Anakin. I think I think I think uh, I think uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is the best Spider-Man by far. That's fair. Like, I think Shrek 2 was better than Shrek 1. Ooh, interesting. Yep. Interesting. Yep. So, the, I mean, this is telling me you're being, like, honest here. So, I, yeah, Kevin has a very vocal minority that is with him. We did, we put up a poll, and D2 did indeed win. So. Uh, D2 is very good. I can't lie with the, with the, I just watched it, like, literally two nights ago. <laughs> Just for kicks, or were you like, "Hey, I need to get I, back in Mighty Ducks"? For the heck of it, like I saw Mighty Ducks Game Changers, and then I saw like the other three, and I was like, "Let's watch two. <laughs> <laughs> I like. But, it. Do you mind if I grab my MacBook charger real quick? My my Mac's about to die. Oh, that's fine. All right, thanks. I'll be right back. <laughs> Mike, are you getting a bunch of like Slack messages or something? I am not. I don't think so. I don't think it's mine. Maybe it's Brady who's getting messages or something. Well, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. Like, I don't have anything up other than, um, like, my notes in this. All right, I'm good. Thanks. All right. I didn't want a dying in interview, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. That would be embarrassing for sure, especially with a prestigious podcast like our own. Um, anyway so you talked a little bit you know you played some roller hockey didn't step on the ice until mighty ducks uh game changers how would you rate your hockey skills right now from like one being you know can't really play to 10 nhl sort of on the road on the path to the nhl gosh um like mm, see i wish you would do it like Compared to like your average hockey player, or okay. like compared to the Mighty Ducks cast, like where I would stand. Okay. Like, well, yeah, let's know, do that. You know, a game changers tier list on best to worst. Like, what are we doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Where do you rank among the cast? Without, without, without trying to chew my horn, I think I'm number two. Number two. I think I'm number two. Number okay. Two. Who? But who's first? Kiefer. Kiefer. <laughs> Is he just way He's, better than everybody else? You know, actually, I'd probably rank myself three because Haley, I don't know if you know who Haley is, um, but she played Ruby, mm. who also in the cast. She's like a national level hockey player, and she is so good. Okay. Like she, like she, she's probably better than Kiefer. She's oh. really, like, she's very, very good. Okay. But if we're talking about, like, if we're talking about, like, primary and principal, I would say I'm number two, and Kiefer's number one. And now, now I can run with Kiefer, like, on the ice. Like, mm -hmm. I'm keeping up with Kiefer now because, like, I went home and I played hockey for my high school team. And I played club. And now I'm going back for my second season in high school. Like, I can run with Kiefer now. But last we left, I was not even close. Not okay. Even close. Gotcha. What's your play style like? Do, do you um, – are you similar to Evan? Are you, like, a goal scorer? Are you how, – how do you play in, I guess, real life? Well, I'm um, – I'm a uh, I'm a center, which is kind of the same as Evan, believe it or not. But I'm I'm very quick on the ice, so I can move around. My playmaking's pretty good. I'm not I'm not the best goal scorer, but I'm a I'm a good playmaker. You know, I set up my teammates. There you go. I like it. Bye. I like it. All right. So you said before before we came on, 
you don't really know much about season two, just that you're going back eventually. Um, what, I guess, how does that first come to you? Do you just get a call that says, Hey, season two is renewed or is there like a big announcement? How did you even learn that there was a season two? I found out probably the same day you found out. Okay. <laughs> um, I found out when it was released on deadline, <laughs> <laughs> literally like six hours after it was released. And like, I happened to go on my phone and I see like that. I have like my snap, my Snapchat is like blown up with like, like a hundred plus messages like after like I took a nap or something and I woke up and it was like exploded my phone was going crazy and like not even my mom knew not my brother like no one in my family like like knew like <laughs> all my friends knew like way before and I was getting blown up and it was everyone was like congrats congrats I was like what what like what's going on and then I saw season two and I was like oh cool oh cool we're going back nice nice so do you make like more demands in season two are you like I only want green M&Ms in my trailer or something like that. Like how, how diva should you get here? Um, I don't know if anything's going to change in the second season. Typically it's like the third season. Then you can like start changing stuff. Okay. So yeah, we're playing for a third season. Maybe right. that's what happened in D3. They became too big and that's why it wasn't as good. And they had to spend all their money on like their food budget. Yeah, that's why the production the quality. Was like in half. They yeah. had to spend their money on like individual M&Ms. Yeah exactly and there was probably the kids were older so there might have been like you know more coffee budget something like that um so what what's uh what's up for season two for for your character you think if you had a, a prediction or something that you'd like to happen to your character what would it be i don't know um something if i wish could have character he grows wings and can fly no oh, um, that'd be a twist he's got, like a superpower like marvel crosses with the mighty ducks like oh we have, I face, like we, have, we have to face the avengers in in a final in a final game and, and here's what happens is they find out like your mom comes to you and says evan you know i need to tell you something you had a twin oh and then we see connor <laughs> Yeah, and Connor is like the other version of you, and he's an evil version, right? And so this is how Marvel gets involved, and so they can have a crossover that way. And you have to essentially fight your own twin brother or a clone, something like that, and and maybe right, he takes your place at school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think Connor would be on board if we say, "Hey, Connor, you get to win the fight with Evan." Then maybe he'd be on board. Right. I heard you're directing it. Actually. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've, I've got a. I've got a. A picture, a three-picture deal with an, an option for a fourth. Oh, so nice! I can do my, uh, do my what's art house. What's, what's the budget? Half a half a billion? Half a half a bill? Half a bill, and then I'm gonna get four points on the end. So. Oh wow! Really <laughs> wow! Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Exactly. Tommy's yeah. agent. Tommy's agent. I was gonna say, I didn't grade any new agent. No season team is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do this as a side project. We're actually uh, a lot more successful, as you can this tell is, by our background. Yeah. This is your side hustle. <laughs> yeah. We just do this for the people. And then we all, we're like, we just let Tommy, you know, direct the Marvel movie. <laughs> Tommy directs on the side, he day trades. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This Evan somehow gets wings and has an evil twin. Um, and the Avengers come in, and it's the the Tommy cut. Um, yeah, four hour cut. Yeah, <laughs> four, hour. four hour cut. A lot of like, you know, exposition, some flashbacks. Um, and the hockey sticks are lightsabers. Um, oh, we can do that now with Star Wars. Yeah, now, now you're speaking Tommy's language. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I like this. A Star Wars Mighty Ducks Marvel mega event. That sounds incredible. Yeah, I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. Um, so I look I, forward. Brady's in. That's the headline. The I'll sign yeah. the contract. Sign yeah. up. Brady's in. We got our, we got our lead. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. But let's, um, let's move on here. So we told people you were coming on. We said, hey, what, what questions do you have for Brady? So we do this thing called the quack question. People ask us questions, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. We pick the best ones, try to answer them. Uh, so we got a lot of questions. Uh, Kevin, do you have the quack question for us? 
I do. Uh, this comes from OG Quackalite Joyce Ng. Joyce's question is, uh, how well would Evan have done representing Belgium in Model UN? And I, I, I kind of would like you to answer this as Evan and as Brady. Mm. Okay. Um, Evan, all right, I'll, I'll talk like, I'll, I'll pretend I'm Evan. Well, I am Evan, but, <laughs> but I'll get into character. Um, I think I'd represent Belgium very well. I think I represent the Don't Bother as well. And I think that I would be happy to represent Belgium and I appreciate it. If I was Brady, I'd probably be like, um, yeah, sure, I'd 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 do it. Um Yeah, I'd be down. I mean that'd be fun. I don't really know. I guess I'd have the same answer as Evan. Yeah. Do do you do people win model UN? Like could I don't even know what model UN is. Yeah. I just, I just line. <laughs> I figure there's like a, a World War Three reenactment or something in there that you gotta do, and whoever wins that wins the model UN. And they get oh. the model. Oh, okay. the prize. I'm sure that's how it works. So, all right. Sounds very well, elaborate. I, I, I do have another quick question, at least one more. Um, okay. uh, this one is from Cats Fan in Ohio, who's at uh, Michael LDF88 on Twitter. Uh, and the question is one on one, you and Charlie, who wins? Ooh. And I, I guess we, we have to assume same age here. Yeah, so I guess it would be D1, Charlie. Uh, more of the spaz way, Charlie. Than the... okay, D1, Charlie. Okay, if we're realistically thinking, D1, Charlie gets smacked. Because when I was in Mighty Duck Season 1, I'm 14. When he's in D1, he's 11. If we're going plot armor, he smacks me so hard. Like, but yeah. He'd do like the triple deke and like the music would go off and like Bombay would like hug him. Like if we're talking like actual show, he would have to win because of like, I don't know, just the culture. Yeah. And then, uh, but if we're talking realistic, probably me because he's 11 in D1, I'm 14. And I guess, like, yeah, I guess what if Charlie was 14? What if we go 14 year old Charlie versus 14 year old Evan? See now that's D two. That's D two Charlie, mm -hmm. and I think D two Charlie is much better than Evan because D two Charlie's on the U S team, U S A team. That's true. That's yeah. true. Evan is on. Well, he was on the Mighty Ducks, uh, which is like yeah, the like, power the state team. They're like the best in the states. They're not the best in the United States of America. I'm sure. Maybe. Maybe they might be the best. I don't know. Pee wee team in the. US, but that's a good point. Not in, the, not in the, you know, they're not an all star team made of, you know, US kids. So, all right. Kevin, do you want to give us one more? Yes, yes, one more. Uh, and I think I know the answer to this because, uh, because, uh, Brady's got a, a nice head of lettuce going on. But this one comes from, uh, Stephen S. Borski on Facebook and it's, do you envy Logan's hair? Um, Right now, no, because I think my hair is longer than his. Mm. But I do when I was, if I were Evan, I would definitely, because I really like his hair. But my hair is getting longer. I haven't cut it since like six months. There but, you go. Oh, yeah. Good shake there. I loved it. It's getting pretty long. I just keep a hat in it because it like, if you, I don't know if I could show you, but it like gets past my face. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I was, uh, I was in that same boat about a few months ago because I, I went a year without a haircut and then I finally caved. But Kevin, are you still, do you still have a ponytail? Oh, yeah, man. Still got it going. Oh, oh. now we're just doing shampoo <laughs> commercials on the pod. Yeah, and Mike, do you want to show us your oh, hair? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Love it. Love it. Oh, you uh, really have the flow going. Yeah, I like What's it. I look are you going to try to sneak the long hair into season two or are they going to make you cut it? No, I'm going to make them keep it. No. <laughs> oh, there you oh, go. Now you he's know getting what, diva. Yeah. No, plot line could be. No, no, no. It's, it's whatever they want. You know, I don't mind cutting it. I don't mind keeping it long. I don't mind wearing a wig. That's all brown, brown, blonde hair. I don't, I don't mind. I'm down for well, it. We're going to pitch the blonde hair wig. But we could do is if your hair is still long, you could be like coach T's disciple. Mm. Like you could like do be a turncoat. And uh, when Coach T starts like his own like team or something like that, and so you like a mini Coach T, lowercase T is what they call you. <laughs> I like lowercase T. All right, I think we have uh, we're coming up on time here, but we've we appreciated you making the effort coming straight from school. We appreciate that. Yes. Uh, 
to. I mean, uh, it's fine. You are you are getting me out of doing homework right away, so that's awesome. Thank awesome. You. you could just turn I this in as like your doing homework anyway. Yeah. This is my like... homework. If I mentioned my teacher, I, I get extra credit. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Who's your teacher? No. Oh, okay. We get. No, my teacher is Mr. Romeo, and he's the best. He's my favorite teacher so far. Oh. What does he teach? He teaches. Uh, I'm in a an academy in my school. It's called the Leadership Academy. Uh-huh. So it's like, it's like uh, like AP close to AP. I say is closest to, and um, it's um, it's history. U.S. history one honors. Okay. Humanities. Is this so you could really earn that captaincy? And so yeah, you're... like yeah, yeah. I like it. Well, Doug called him Mr. Romeo. <laughs> and with that, uh, again, December third, Diary of a Wimp Kid, and maybe movie Disney Plus. Uh, you got some other projects coming up. Anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to plug? Uh, as we um, sure, uh, stay tuned for my next season two. That's all I. Uh, that's all I really gotta say. And uh, I really appreciate your time, guys. Really appreciate. It. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed the podcast. There you Any, go. Anywhere, anywhere people can find you on Instagram, Twitter, anything like that. Sure, Brady Noon on all social media. So there you go. Pretty simple. I like it for us. Thequackdeck.com. Go there. Contact us at Quackdeck Pod on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Quackdeck Pod. Go to iTunes. Give us five stars. Tell us what you think of this Marvel Star Wars Mighty Ducks crossover that Tommy has uh, found himself directing. Uh, it's going to be a blockbuster. I'm excited about it. Uh, thanks to all our producers. And remember, ducks fly together. Ducks fly together. Quack, quack. Ducks fly together.